Hey everyone, my name is Arjun Nair and I'm a music director and voice artist based out of Mumbai. I'm the co-founder of All Mango Productions and I'm also a part of the bands Voktronika and Rang. And today, the good folks at Sapari have given me the flow as part of the Learn Something New series to try and decode the broad strokes of what it's like to make music for advertising. The most important part of all of this is your pre-production phase. Whilst these phases are often interrelated, you've got to understand that 70 to 80 percent of getting it right is phase one in the pre-production. This is when you receive the brief and you're effectively specking out what you're targeting as a product. I think it's very important and helpful to have a set of essential questions to try and break down and understand the brief because briefs are often very vague. You'll have three lines which come in which often involve Hame Hero and Honey Bunny and everything in between. But I think essential questions such as what are you looking to create, who are you creating it for, and other technical questions such as what are the mediums, what are the cut downs, what are the languages, uh, what is the expected durations, are you expected to use a male, female vocalist, etc. A lot of these things, you've got to put down a list of essential 15-20 questions, 15-20 things which usually come in with any kind of work in advertising. Make sure you put them down and ask them. The next step is essential to decode and internalize a brief and rewrite the brief yourself. I find it very helpful to put down the three, four key words, such as you're looking at something inspirational, edgy, uh, you know, you have these very typical words which are thrown around, but you've got to figure out how to translate that into music. So it's important I put down these words and put them right into my project. And often it serves as a good reminder of, you know, not getting lost as you're creating the track in phase two. Once you put this down, it's important to move on to the next step, which is to set expectations. Get on the call with the director, the creative producers. These guys are your best friends and allies through this entire project because they're going to be putting forth the product to the client and getting the approvals. So it's important for you to convey your understanding of the brief. Make sure that you have also conveyed your limitations, such as you might not get this vocalist in this budget or this instrumentation palette and this genre may work better for this ad. I know the entire idea because you're all supposed to use this to get in sync because you're working with very, very short amount of time. So it's important to gun for the same product. And now the Rohit Sharma noise campaign. This was something that I was super excited about because I'm a big cricket buff. So I understood the subject or the protagonist very well. But the brand out here is noise. The brand is more important. Important to focus on what you need to be able to execute out here. So I was always in touch with the director in the pre-production phase where you know clearly what kind of shoot it's going to be, what are the kind of shots, what are the kind of treatment, you get these treatment notes, I want this kind of pacing, I want to borrow from these kind of ideas, this, 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 this. And you have the entire first half of the film where the entire noise part is happening. Let it be gritty, let it be organic, let it be like metal and clangy and bangy and all those things happening. Rohit got out? I knew this would happen. Sab aise hai. Doing it just for the endorsements. When is he going to score a double century? Why is he the guy? He needs to be on the bench. I was also accounting for what's going to happen in the post part because you have these voices, you have all the sound design part of it. What is the sound design person doing at their end? And they had to be married in together. So this was challenging, but it was super exciting to work on because I think the product turned out to be really good and was a lot of fun to do. And finally, a department that's running in parallel with yours is sound. Respect it. Find out what the role of sound is in the film, how much of it is going to be Foley, sound design, who's doing the mix. All this is very, very important. And it feeds into your entire creative output as well. And now you're all set with your understanding of what you're going to be doing. And let's move on to phase two. The creation or the production phase is obviously the most enjoyable phase personally for me as well. Because you're not just here as a musician, you're bringing your entire musical skills and you're serving the role of an ideator. You're providing a creative solution. So that's very important and it's a challenge in itself. I think there are a few basic aspects such as let's always make sure that you pick the right scale, the right key. It affects the entire energy of the film, whether you're scoring something or making a jingle. Always pick the right kind of genre and instrumentation palette. And the instrumentation palette, irrespective of the genre, sometimes you might end up using orchestral strings in what is an obvious rock track and create a cross breed between that for an orchestral rock track. That's not what you might have started off with, for example. But the most important thing that you've got to learn to master at this phase is pacing a film. It's not just about looking at the edit, looking at the, the cuts and picking out a tempo that will sit well with the cuts. It's about overall being able to determine as the music director what the pace of a film should be. Because sometimes it's your job 
to increase the pace. Sometimes it's your job to make a film feel slower in spite of the visuals being super fast. So this affects how it's going to get consumed by audiences. So make sure you spend a lot of time practicing this and mastering this. So based off the brief and based off, you know, these basic parameters, you already started laying out a track and you've arrived at what is called a scratch track or a basic skeleton of what it's going to sound like. This gets slapped onto what is a first cut or a first edit. It's what allows all the stakeholders involved, the director, the producers, maybe the client in some cases, to know if we are all headed in the right direction. And this is where they can come back with changes. You can figure out what is working, what is not working. Often edits get influenced by the music. The music gets influenced by a recut in the edit, vice versa. All these things happen. Something I find is a good tip to follow out here is to make sure that your scratch track itself it's not too loose or vague. Let it be as close to the final product that you want to put out. Not everyone's creative enough to be able to visualize or perceive what the music is going to sound like. And definitely it's going to be something that clients struggle with. So you're better off giving them something which is close to the final product. And it also helps you make sure that you're ahead of the entire time ball out here. So that's that. Account for all of the elements that are going to turn up in the final track. Don't think that it's going to get magically fixed in the mix. Make sure you have everything in your system ready, locked, loaded, polished out, built out to the final stage before it's sent out so that you account for the right amount of spaces for everything that's going to show up in the final product. Uh, when you're working with a celebrity artist like Nora Fatehi, who is an amazing dancer, the track had to kind of be ready before they even shot the film. So here you're going to be able to imagine what the film's going to look like, work with the director on that. This particular ad also required me to get on a call with their choreographer, with her choreographer who was very clear about, you know, these are the kind of energy points that he's looking at once he heard the basic track. They basically told us that this is the particular dance hall style which he's extremely famous for, but we need to combine it with something like this. What do you think? And somehow we arrived at this track which was a perfect blend of all of the inputs and it was kind of ready before the film was even shot. Once it was shot, it was a question of designing the first half of the entire film, the noise part of it, after that. So sometimes you've got to work backwards. The track comes first. It's a very chicken and egg kind of thing, but uh, yeah, it happens. Now, like I said, all three phases are interrelated to each other. And I'll tell you why. Phase three, where your product is going to get mixed and the final output is going to be slapped onto the final film. You need to be able to cultivate a thorough understanding or at least a good primary understanding of what an engineer is going to bring to the table. The basic concepts of sound design, basic concepts of sound mixing. It's These are very useful tools to have equipped, even if you're the music director for a particular project, because that makes you that much more capable of being able to speak the same language and give the engineer the best chance to be able to deliver a good product, because you are the person responsible for, on behalf of the entire team that's working on this, for what a film will eventually sound like with its marriage and music. So work very well with the engineer, let them take the calls on the technical aspects of stuff, but make sure you equip them with all of the creative inputs that you have for why you want something to sound the way it does, and then work together and sign off on it. And now you have the final product. So yes, uh, hope this was a pretty decent overview of my understanding of what it's like to make music for this medium. It's definitely a challenge, and it's a time crunched affair and you've got to consistently deliver more than what is expected of you. But if you're the kind of person who enjoys a good challenge, I can tell you that there's no better feeling than being able to solve an idea musically. It's a great, great feeling. So yes, that, that's pretty much it. Uh, hope you've been able to learn something new. Thank you.